review, we're going to review the, uh, the three other attitudes that we started with, the top, the first three. Our attitude determines our approach to life. Now, our scriptures are, uh, uh, to do a little bit of review for those who haven't been here, is we're doing Numbers 13 and the, uh, the uh, spies, the 10 spies that had a bad report, okay? So that's where we're going. They had a bad attitude. Uh, Joshua and Caleb had great attitudes. Okay, our uh, attitude determines our relationships with people. If you're wondering, why don't people want to hang around with me? Maybe you got a bad attitude. Maybe your attitude stinks. All right? Number three, our attitude is often the only difference between success and failure. Why did the ten fail? Their attitude. Why did the two succeed? Their attitude. Okay, now we're going number four. Number four, our attitude at the beginning of a task will affect its outcome more than anything else. Whatever you start to do, whatever it is you start to do, whether it's, whether it's spiritual or otherwise, the, the attitude that you have before you start will have, make a huge difference on the outcome. Amen. Amen. So look at the 10 spies. What was their attitude at the beginning? Oh, we saw the Anak. That was their attitude at the very beginning. When we turn to Numbers 13, and this is, and and starting in in, in verse, uh, well, I'm going to start, Mariah, I'm going to start in verse 27. Yeah, 26, 27. Now they departed and came back to Moses. So the 12 went out, they came back, and, and uh, to, back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And then they told them and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. And everybody must have been pretty excited because it was good-looking fruit. Nevertheless, there's that word. You can put but in there. But, nevertheless, the people who dwell in in the land are strong. Cities are fortified, very large. Moreover, we see the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites, they dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Jordan. Go to verse 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have done or which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, come from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and, we, and so were we in their sight. Now in verse 32, it said that all the people we saw, well, in the beginning he said, oh, well, we saw these, these people, and, but we saw the Anak. They were there too. Then the story changed, and everybody's huge. Everybody is. Really? I thought it was just the Anak. Oh, no, no. They, 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 everybody's big. And see, so they were defeated before they started because of their attitude. But not so with Caleb. So I've been, been pretty excited about Caleb. He's, you, know, in the, you know what God, God said about Caleb? He says he's got a different spirit. He's got a different spirit. He's got a spirit of faith is what he's got. And his spirit of faith, the spirit of faith is what? That what I believe, that's what I say. If you believe it, you say it. Whether negative or positive, you believe, what you believe, you say, because your thoughts become your words, and your words become your actions, and your actions become your character, and your character becomes your destiny. And so the, Caleb, he says in verse 30, that they, they, they start off with this bad report and Caleb quieted the people. I, now, when, when you see, when I see quieted, I see, shut up. Everybody, shut up. You 10, stop it. Just shut up right now. Because I want to tell you something. 
that has to do with faith and what God can do. He says, let us go up at once. Let's not wait. Let's go and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. And then it says, but the men who had gone up with him, oh, no, no, we're, we're not able. And then it, it infected the entire camp. And so now, look at it, now chapter 14. This is Caleb going off more and his attitude at the beginning. Because as we're talking about, your attitude at the beginning can affect the outcome. And so he says this in chapter 14, verse 7. He says, and they spoke to all the congregation of the, of the children of Israel, Joshua and Caleb. And he says, the land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. And if the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. And it, it is a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. We will eat them up. We will eat them up. Their protection has departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. And then the, the wonderful thing happens in verse 10. And all the congregation said, stone them with stones. Good attitude, bad attitude, bad attitude. And so we see here a totally different attitude from the start. And then, and, and, and then it's a good land. He says it's exceedingly good land. If he delights in us, then he would, it, it, it's ours. And the only reason he wouldn't delight in them is because they aren't people of faith. That's why. See, what does Hebrews eleven six 6 say? For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must, first of all, believe that he is indeed God. And that he's a rewarder. That's the other thing you got to know. You got to know that he exists and you got to know that he is a rewarder. What's that mean? He's good. He's a rewarder. Who? Who does he reward? Those who diligently seek him. You say, well, my life isn't blessed. Are you seeking him? Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Are you seeking him? Well, my life just sucks. Well, are you seeking him? It's, it's not complicated. If I can figure it out, you can. I got a C average in high school, okay? I can't do much, but I can preach. Okay, so, well, I... Anyway, so the 10 and the rest didn't go in. All those under, uh, all those 20 and above didn't go in because of their faith, because, their, because of their unbelief and not believing that God could do, as I say often, Ephesians 3.20, he does exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we think or even ask, according to the power that works within us. They didn't see that. Joshua and Caleb said, it's ours, man. God said it. He said we're going to have this land. He's going to give this promised land to us. He promised. It's called the promised land because it's based on a promise. And they couldn't see it. Like I said, all 12 saw the same thing, but two had a different eternal perspective. The other 10 didn't. And they had a, 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 an attitude that was horrible from the beginning. It affected their outcome. They never saw the promised land, never saw it. If you see something in the natural and it looks daunting, always start with a positive attitude because it will affect the end. As I was preparing this, I thought about jobs that I used to do when I was painting. And, um, you know, and we'd have, I, I mean, I have painted some big buildings and I've painted some big houses. And I mean, I'm talking... Well, give me an idea. I think this one place, uh, I think it's like 14,000 square feet. And, uh, you know, stucco and, uh, you know, two stories, or two and a half, almost, yeah, three stories. I mean, it's just huge. And we get on the job, and they go, and they'd go, whoa, Captain, this is a big one. I go, yeah, but we can do it. And we can do this in a week. I know we can. And then we come on some other job, and it's just like, oh, my, and they'd go, 
oh, God, when the, this is going to take forever. I go, no, it's not. We can do this. We can tackle this. And then I used to do this. We'd get on the job, and I used to do this dance. I don't know if I should do the dance, but. Go, 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 go. Let's go. And they're all fired up, and they go, all right, let's tackle it. That's how you have to tackle things in the spirit or in the natural. You got to go, I can do this. We can do this. Amen? Amen. Have the positive attitude, and it totally affects your outcome. Number five. Number five. Our attitude, I knew when I said that, I said, I'm going to do that dance. Should I do that? I knew they were going, yeah, come on, come on. And the guys especially, yeah, yeah, do it, do it. Our attitude can turn problems into blessings. And I didn't get a big bunch of shout either. Yeah. Okay, think about Joshua and Caleb. Now, they, these 10 leaders, and this is something, something that I, don't, I, I didn't always see, but they were leaders. They were the top person of each tribe who Moses saw as the leader of that tribe. Leaders are what? Influencers. Doesn't matter. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be the head usher. You don't have to be a greeter. Everybody is an influencer. Everybody is a leader. You're influencing people somehow, some way, and you are either influencing them positively or you are influencing them negatively. There's no middle ground. There's no middle ground. So he picks 12 of the top, and so these guys are well-known. They're, they're extremely well-known throughout the entire nation that's traveling through this desert. And these 10, they have now become a problem to the entire nation, to the entire nation. And Caleb and Jacob, uh, Joshua and Caleb are ready to go into the land of milk and honey. We are ready. I mean, you know what's interesting is they, they all saw it, and then they came, and, and the Bible doesn't tell us that they talked amongst each other before they, it doesn't say that. I find kind of interesting that the first time, it's, it, it, it seems that the first time Caleb and Joshua hear this bad report is when they came back. So they weren't really talking amongst themselves, it seems, it appears. Uh, but in any case, so they get delayed. Joshua and Caleb get delayed, but what do they do? Okay, they got, pro they got 10 guys that are problem. And what do they do? Well, they never complain about the 10. We never hear them complain about the 10. And they just figure, you know what? God said that this generation, everybody 20 and up won't get in. But we will, and our kids will, and my family's coming in, all my tribe's coming in. That's part of my, my you know, progeny. They're all getting in. And so we'll just keep serving him. We'll just keep serving him. And we are going to wander around this desert for 40 years. 40, 45 years, we're going to walk around this place with these malcontents, these complainers, but they're not going to be a problem to us. We're not going to let it affect us because God has made a promise. And they just figure, in time, it'll happen. And what ends up happening? Joshua, he gets to lead the people into the promised land. He gets to go up to the Jordan River, and, he's, and, and, and it parts in flood stage. In flood stage, it, it parts. Not as great a miracle as the Red Sea, but it does. He gets to see that, and they all walk across, and they get, grab 12 stones, and they make them memorial right there. He sees all that, and he conquers the giants. The very thing he said 40 years before, they actually accomplished through him. And his attitude towards those who were a problem, it didn't affect his walk with God. Now, first of all, you say, well, Pastor Steve, you say our battle is not against flesh and blood, and it isn't. But that doesn't mean people can't be a problem. They can. 
People can be a problem to you. What are you going to do? Okay? And then what about Caleb? Well, I love this story. Joshua 14. Joshua 14. Because Joshua, he's walking around too. And it starts in verse 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kezanite, said to him, you know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you? He's talking to Joshua. Between you and me. You remember that? <laughs> and he said, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Bar Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, this is what Moses told Caleb, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have fo wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said. Love that. Remember what God says? God keeps. As he said. I'm losing my spot. These 40 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old. Yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. I don't think he said, and he's, I think he's pretty stirred up. And he didn't go, can I have the mountain now that God promised me? Can I have it, please? No, he said, give it to me. God promised this to me. And he said, and, 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 for, of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you have heard in that day how the Anakim were there and their cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and it shall be, and I shall be. I, look, if nobody else is doing it, I'm driving them out. That's a man of faith. I'm driving them out. And then I love this. Next verse. I love this. And Joshua blessed him. <laughs> Settle down, Caleb. Okay? Bless you. Bless your brother. The mountain's yours. Okay? Settle down. Settle down. And then and Caleb, he, you know what? All that time, all those problem people, Caleb kept his eyes on the prize. He said, that hill country will be mine. It will be mine. I will have it one day. Despite these problem people, I will have my mountain. He did not let it distract him. And he said, I'm gonna, I don't have, care if I have to wait and wander around here for 40 some years. I am getting it despite these troublesome brethren. Despite them, I am going to get it. And you know what? Jesus had problem people. Jesus had problem people? Yeah, turn to your neighbor. <laughs> Pastor Steve, I've never been a problem to Jesus. Well, okay. You know, Jesus had problems. He had the Pharisees, he had the Sadducees, he had lawyers, he had scribes. And you know what? He just loved them. They were problems. They were problem people, but he loved them. Now, he challenged them, but he loved them through it all. And then look at Matthew 17. Talk about, well, the, could the people of God be a problem? Well, they were in the day of Israel. Matthew 17 and verse, did I not give you that? I didn't give you that. Well, I got it right here. Matthew 17 and verse 17. I missed that one. Oh, verse 14, and when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples that they could not, but they could not cure him. And Jesus answered him and says, oh, you faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I put up with you? You know, I used to read that and go, I thought Jesus was always really nice and milk toast and all that. Well, no. 
I mean, he drove people out of the temple with a whip. So he's like, you guys don't, don't you get it? He says, he says, and then he goes on to say this. He says, how long should I bear with you? How long should I be with you? How long should I bear with you? Bring him here. Bring him here. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And then the disciples came to Jesus in privately and said, come over here, Jesus. Can we just talk to you? We don't want anybody else to hear this. Okay, we don't want anybody else to hear this, but why couldn't we drive it out? Okay, what's the problem here? And, and uh, he says, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I'm telling you the truth. I say to you, if you had must, if you had faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. He says, well, don't I have to have great... That, that, that woman uh, uh, that, that came, that, whose daughter was... I think her daughter was demon-possessed. And, 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 you know, when Jesus said... She said, he said, oh, I just come to, for, the, uh, for, the lot, for the children of Israel. And she says, yeah, but, they, but even the, the dogs eat the crumbs off the table. And he says, great is your faith. Now, at first he wouldn't, because she just called him, you know, uh, uh, by a name, but he was getting her to locate her faith. Because you need to know where your faith is. You know, people think, well, I'm just going to believe, I'm going to believe for a, you know, a, a, a house that they can't, they can't afford. Or they believe for something that you know, they get some something that their faith. That's why I ask people, especially when they're going to have surgery or something, and they they start to feel guilty for having surgery. No, that's all right. If that's where your faith is, that's okay. It's okay. You got to know locate, and that was what Jesus was doing with this woman. And then he told her, "Your faith was great." Well, so what kind of how big is is great faith? Mustard seed. Mustard seed. That's how big it is. People think, oh, it's, it's, it's huge. No, he just said right there, if you had the faith as a mustard seed, you would tell this mountain to move, whatever obstacles in your way. You, you think, well, how do I get that kind of faith? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's the formula, okay? If I would, I don't know if it's, it's a formula, it's just the principle. It's the principle, okay? So Jesus even though his disciples, he got, they were, times they were a problem. You and I have been a problem before, but Jesus loves you right through it. Hello. You've carried unforgiveness. You've carried hurt. You've been bitter. You, there's all kinds of things we could list that we have not been the best. Hello. But he loves us right through it and right in it and right out of it, because he's good. And those problems ended up, these problems, these disciples, ended up spreading the message of the kingdom of heaven and, and known to the world, and they turned the greatest empire upside down. See, Jesus didn't, he, he didn't see them as problems. He saw they had problems, but you know what? I'm going to train them. I'm going to disciple them. I'm going to teach them, and they're going to go out, and they're going to do exploits for Jesus, for me and for my Father, for the kingdom. That's what they're going to do. And what you know what else? Pharisees got saved. See, we think all the Pharisees were horrible. You know, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Nicodemus got saved. There were other Pharisees. They got saved. There were scribes, I'm sure, that got saved. I'm sure there was lawyers that got saved. I can't believe every single one perished. I just can't believe that. That's just me. I don't have any scripture for it, okay? And the greatest thing is Jesus said, it's to, my, it's to your advantage that I leave. Because I, while I'm here, I can only go to one city at a time. I can't go, I can't be in all places at all times. But you know what? I'm going to leave and I'm going to send the precious Holy Spirit and he is just like me. He's just like me. And whatever he says, it, he got it from me. It comes from the throne room of God. And it comes down here and speaks to us. Oh, not it. He comes and speaks to us. That's how it works. 
And so it, it, it's, a, it's a great, great lesson to know that we don't let problems affect our attitude because the attitude turned the problem into a blessing. See, Jesus, quote, unquote, problem children, problem disciples, ended up being turned into a blessing to the world, to the entire world. People and things can be a problem, but with a positive attitude, we can always turn it into a blessing. Always turn it into a blessing. And that's the point. Now, next two weeks, we're going to finish with number six and number seven. And you're not going to like number seven. No, actually, you will. This has been really good for me because I'm around, as I've said, those that don't know, but my wife is, is the most positive person. We're, we're in a whatever it says positive attitude. If that was in the dictionary or a thesaurus or something, my wife's picture would be there, okay? So, uh, so it, it's been great for me. It, this has been challenging, and I've had people come up to me and say, Pastor Steve, this has been really good. It's, it's really, I, I, I don't like it, but it's good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The Word of God, when it challenges us, we're kind of like, yeah, yeah. But, but I like it. I like it. All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, we can change from a bad attitude, a negative attitude, to a positive attitude when we put these principles into our lives. And we need to see, Lord, that our attitude in the beginning can change the outcome and when it's positive. And our attitude can turn problems into blessings when we look at it through your eyes. Help us see through your eyes, Jesus. You, you were our greatest example of turning problems into blessings. The problem of sin was taken care of. And it ended up you removing those sins as we've talked about there that uh, uh, in communion, that you turn that around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.